Hey guys, this is Tiggy Maximus with Tiggy Maximus Talks on Spotify and YouTube, episode 196. Well, thank you guys. Um, You guys made it to 196 episodes. This one's actually kind of a special episode for me because, well, on this episode I'm going to talk about my first ever show as an associate producer. Um... But yeah, guys, um, this episode, I'm going to talk about that show that I had with Gumbo at the Mic Drop, Gold Room. And uh, there was another show that I went to Mic Drop on September 1st. Ube World, produced by Mikey Perry, hosted by Eric Esteban. Uh, two great shows. One of them i got to be a part of. Um, but yeah, on, just remember guys to spread the word to your friends and family about this podcast and everyone else in between and also, uh, subscribe, follow, watch, listen, even donate to the podcast if you like. And there's a link on my Spotify episode, which takes you to a spot where you can donate to the podcast. I think like. 99 cents a month is like the bare minimum. Anything is appreciated, guys. Also, there's a link on my YouTube which takes you to the Spotify episodes and just click on the link in spot within Spotify and then it'll allow you guys to uh, donate to the podcast. Choose any of the episodes. 196 episodes. I'm pretty sure you're going to see that link. And feel free to donate to the podcast. Anything is appreciated. So, um, let's first talk about Ube World before I forget. Uh, this was another sold out show. Um, I had to give up two seats in this one um, to allow two other people to get in. So, I guess in a way they kind of overbooked, but it's great because that means they're doing well. Um, but. Wow, great show. And I got to first time see the headliner, uh, Ron Josal. Um, Guys from Canada, um, great guy. Does a lot of like uh, specials, TV shows, movies. Um, So that's pretty cool. And it's kind of cool again to meet another actor on the comedy scene. So. Oh, (laughs) I also have a special surprise to talk about, um, but after these two parts. Okay, so Ube World, uh, Eric Esteban started off the show. It's always kind of cool seeing him. Uh, Guy's from Chicago, he lives in LA. Um, He talks about... um, He talks about this one Tagalog saying that he grew up, but because at when he was younger, he can remember the words, but he can't speak it fluently back then. And so he asked his dad, well, what does this phrase mean in Tagalog? And then uh, basically it was pretty much, I'm going to hit you so hard uh, that all you're ever going to hear is do re mi fa sol la di <laughs> and of course i guess that's somewhat of a reference to sound of music um he did get things going uh crowd liked them um he might have had one new joke but most of it i kind of remembered from the previous times i've seen him and I guess it's only just from Ubi World. So, but some of the jokes, they do, the old jokes that he has, they do work. Um, the crowd that was here, they all might have probably seen them mostly for the first time. And, um, you know, it hits pretty well with the crowd. Um, but I would say 
This time around, I want to say Eric Esteban was an 8.4 out of 10. Um, I guess the next time I do go to Ube World and he's and he's on the show, I'm kind of hoping he does have some new jokes the next time around. But of course, you know, when you travel a lot, it does get a little hard to write your own material and have it ready for a big crowd. So he does have a, uh, a special out. Uh, miscellaneous brown I think it's called so uh, check that out also go see Eric Esteban whenever he's in a town near you uh, next person that was on the stage was Maria de la Ghetto uh, I believe this is maybe my second or third time seeing her now and this was really a funny set and uh, she talked about owning up to her body image and then she did say that one out of four people do have a thing for um, for big ladies uh, I think it was BBL um, so that got a big laugh from everybody because she knows that someone in the room has been kind of checking her out because one out of four guys in the room has a thing for it. So that got a lot of big laughs. Um, and um, she did talk about uh, dating um, and then uh, talking about, I guess, kind of growing up. Um, but overall, um, she did pretty well with the crowd. Uh, it was always a pleasure seeing her and uh, we got reacquainted. It was nice uh, catching up with her and some of the other comics. Um, I want to say Maria de la Ghetto. Maria de la Ghetto. Um, 9.2 out of 10. Did a great job. Uh, next person to come up was Ali Dalamimi. Um, he started off with a voice, an accent, and then says that he doesn't really talk that way. That uh, got kind of, um, that got people going, laughed at it, um, talked about from being Detroit, talked about bombing, um, uh, it was a lot of great stuff. He got the crowd going throughout his entire set. Um, Honestly, this might be his best um, crowd that I've seen in person. So, and you know, he did headline the Gold Room one time at the mic drop. So, um, Ali, I want to say he was a 9 out of 10. Did a great job. Crowd liked him. Super funny. He didn't bomb. <laughs> um, next up was Mikey Perry, Man of the Hour. The reason why we all go to Ube World. Um, he was actually selling the merchandise that had the hair and the cap the one that is basically his image the hair and the cap um, he did talk about growing up having a favorite ex um, he talked about the threesome being butt naked and not being able to defend himself um, then uh, I had to think about Sue Young uh, being a look-alike for Sue Young. So um, did well with the crowd. Did great with some of the crowd work. Um, I want to say eight point nine out of ten. Um, the next person that went up was Mitch Narito. He was on, I uh, guess that show, Good Places, with uh, Ted Danson, I, I think it is. Um, it showed the clip of, uh, of him being in that TV show, and then apparently he was casted as a dad, but the son was like three years younger than him. <laughs> but I guess he looks like he could be an older dad that could have a kid of that age. So that's Hollywood for you. Um, 
he did talk about um he did talk about um when you go to a filipino party and then there's two extremes to it and especially when you are confronted by the uh um the uh what is it the uh titas um i think it was when you go to a party and uh if you're seen to have getting too much food you know they make fun of you thinking that you're gonna get fat but then if they see that you're not eating, they're going to think that, oh, you don't like the food? <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Uh, he did have a smart thing to say. And uh, that got that got some oohs and ahs, but a lot of laughs. So Mitch was pretty good. Um, I want to say the, it was an 8.75 out of 10. Um, and then um, there was a karaoke contest between uh, a man and a woman in this one the guy went with the country song um, the lady went with Alicia Keys and I guess they had to vote twice because the first time it sounded like it was a tie second time they voted they decided that the person who won the karaoke contest was the lady and I guess she won a t-shirt or something for Ube World and I'm guessing that the guy also won a t-shirt for Ube World because he volunteered to go up <laughs> so um, uh, and then um, we got our headliner, Ron Josal. My first time seeing this guy, and wow, he did well, super well. Um, he, I think he had um, talked about, um, I think there are like two types of cougars in the uh, Filipino community. Uh, there's the one that is uh, mentally beautiful. They may not look like a perfect model, but they mentally are beautiful. And they're very confident up here. And then that's the one cougar type in the Filipino culture. Then I guess the other one, I guess, was more like, I don't know. I kind of missed the other part, but I remember the one about the beautiful mentally. So, and then uh, there was one where he said that being racial and racist are not the same thing. Being racist is just, just being mean and racist, but racial, you're not as racist, but it's racist. <laughs> Uh, so something like that. Uh, oh, I think is you're still racist, but not as mean, or something, something like that. So that got a lot of big laughs, and it was consistent laughs throughout his whole set. And I'm glad I got to see him at this particular Ube World. Um, and there were a few other jokes too. Uh, he did, yeah, he did talk about Dayton. Uh, uh, but yeah, just also growing up too. And um, honestly, you know, I enjoyed the whole thing, his whole entire set. And uh, I got to meet him, got a picture with him. So that was pretty cool. I, I like when comics are very um, accessible, approachable, in a sense. So, um, I want to say Ron was a 9.5 out of 10. He was the best one of the night. Um, 
it was kind of cool seeing uh, um, my friends there, uh, friends Victoria, her friend Christina, uh, Dan, Randy, um, Jackie. So, and then got to see uh, some other people there, uh, Thomas Mays. Um, I think I saw Haley, and then uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, overall great show. Another sold out show. I'm glad. I'm happy for Mikey Perry. I uh, can't wait for the next one. Uh, probably sometime in October. Um, so, like I said, this is a very special episode for me. Um. Oh, before I forget, I want to mention that little surprise thing I want to talk about. So it turns out, because uh, I have another job, um, I have like seven jobs apparently, and part of my seven jobs, I had delivered food to this one customer by the name Jamal, Jamal F, and honestly. Um, I kind of had a few, uh, a feeling of who this person might be, but because the spelling is like the same, and the reason why I bring that up is because there was a San Diego State basketball player who became pro, got drafted by the NBA's Memphis Grizzlies. His name is Jamal Franklin. Now. On my customer order, it says Jamal F, and it's spelled exactly the same. Just the F could stand for Franklin, but I'm thinking Jamal F, and I'm delivering baked bear ice cream and cookies to this customer, and he happens to be it at the Marriott um, Del Mar. Um, so part of me is thinking, is this Jamal Franklin? But you know. I kind of thought about it on the drive over, but uh, as I showed up, I'm just waiting out in the front of the lobby. I see the valet. Uh, I was talking to the valet for like a couple of minutes, about a minute, and then I saw the customer come out, and he kind of looks like Jamal Franklin, and I kind of thought about it. And then, you know, I gave him his food order. He gave me the pin number so I can get paid for it. Um, the thing is, when I saw his face, I think I knew it was him, but I was like 80% sure it was Jamal Franklin. So after I gave Jamal Franklin his food, his ice cream, we went back inside the lobby, went upstairs to his hotel room. As I went around my car and I was about to go into my car after I opened my door, the valet says, Hey, that is Kawhi's friend. And I was saying back to the valet, wait, wait, hold up. Was that Jamal Franklin? And I I think the valet said, I don't remember his name, but he came down to hang out with Kawhi this weekend. And it hit me right at that moment. And then I said, Oh, dude, that's Jamal Franklin. He played for the San Jose Aztecs with Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard, who plays for the LA Clippers right now, and he was an NBA champion with the Toronto Raptors and the San Antonio Spurs. And I can't believe it um, that after the valet confirmed it for me, after I can piece together all the puzzles of this little uh, meetup, <laughs> that was Jamal Franklin. Uh, former San Diego State basketball star and uh, former NBA player. I think now he's playing overseas in China. Um, so I can't believe it. I met my first ever, my first ever NBA player. Sadly, because I couldn't confirm that that was exactly him until my va the valet said something. You know, I didn't get a picture with them, but I got to meet him. For the, you know my first ever NBA player I got to meet so that is pretty cool uh, <laughs> um, 
but yeah i wanted to share that because it's kind of cool because like i guess in some ways like due to how i guess in a sense how public or private this service is that i'm a part of with uber um you might run into a celebrity or a pro athlete and you know you meet them in a random place and it just so happens i provide a service that might actually be something that they use and you know it you know is one of those things where honestly part of me kind of want to ask him hey are you so and so and i'm you know if they say no then you know you know oh well but if they said like yeah that's actually me and like oh who knows i probably could have gotten a picture but at the same time i'm working but you know what's the worst that could happen right um but yeah um i wanted to share that so who knows maybe down the road i might meet another pro athlete celebrity um and i'll be better you know more aware better focus on that so <laughs> who knows i might see Kawhi Leonard at some point who knows um so yeah the other thing i want to share the first, and this is why it's a special episode other than that i met my first nba player um but yeah i made my first ever associate producer debut at the mic drop in the gold room with jeremy gumbo christian gumbo and friends um i was kind of nervous in a way for this show because i was asked to do something and i had to be in front of people and sometimes you know it takes me like a few moments to kind of get used to it but i just happened to be in the room i was ready to go up there to the front of the stage in front of the microphone spotlight in my face and um it was nice that gumbo brought me up to the front of the uh the front of the stage and um so the way it works is um, I'm supposed to introduce two people who have never done comedy before, stand-up comedy, and they were going to do three to five minutes telling jokes at, at the best they can, and the crowd will pretty much will judge how well they did. And um, I got to meet the two. Uh, they're both dancers, actually, that I found out later. Uh, we got Miss Holly and Chrissy Drake. Uh, they both dance here in San Diego and um, you know, I'm probably guessing they do like uh, music videos and they teach classes they do choreography um, And I just happened to meet their uh, mutual dancing friend uh, Desiree Danielle super cool gal uh, She does choreography so all three are good friends and uh, I guess gumbo managed to uh, ask these two ladies if they want to do stand up for the first time and they were obliged there's supposed to be a third person but i couldn't get a third person to agree to it much less you know not to back out so you know who you are <laughs> um but yeah i mean in a way three to five minutes can be very short but it also can be very an eternity up there um so yeah i basically i got to uh it was towards the end of the show. Um, so Gumbo talked about me, what I do for the comedy scene uh, in general, support him, support all the comics, make time for everyone, uh, taking pictures, tag everybody, make public of what they do on stage at, from venue to venue. Uh, it's nice to be appreciated, honestly. Um, so... let's start with how the show went um gumbo pretty much had jeff grooms start off the show and he did some comedy um in the room i have my friends from work I have my uh my friends that were there too my mom and my sister came out to support um my show with uh, Gumbo. Uh, that's pretty awesome. Thank you all. Thank you guys for doing that. 
very much appreciated um it's kind of cool in a way like to see all your hard work kind of pay off and who knows what could happen in the near future i could be producing my own show someday very soon um so jeff grooms he made uh the room laugh at time about more than half of the set did pretty well actually uh, talked about what would happen if you take away TikTok from uh, people these days or back then uh, you know kind of like make people really function in a good way and if you take away their TikTok and stuff or social media how how would they ever interact with people you know um, I want to say Jeff Grooms uh, did pretty well in, fr in that room, sold out room by the way, um, 8.5 out of 10. Um, then Jeff Grooms pretty much uh, introduced the man of the hour, Gumbo. Um, this is my second time seeing him. I, saw, I met Gumbo back in February 2023. And it was uh, Black Outside show with Law Young, Walter Ford, P Man, Camille Waters. Um, so that was a fun show. It was a late show, I think, on like a Saturday night or something. Uh, I was I knew of Camille Waters. I wanted to come out and support her, and then I got to meet all those other comics. So how how great was that and who knew that i would be making these friendships with people on that show for the next 18 months and beyond so um gumbo uh did pretty well he kind of did a little dance dancing up to the stage get the crowd hyped up after jeff had um introduced him um he talked about the traffic from LA to San Diego, how it took him 12 weeks to get here. Uh, that was pretty cool. He did have a joke later on about COVID and commuting that the traffic was so nice when COVID was around because he got from New York to San Diego in 30 minutes. <laughs> uh, that got everybody laughing. That was my favorite joke that he said that night. Um, uh, Gumbo, I want to say, um, he did pretty well. Um, I want to say he was a 8.8 out of 10, um, uh, with the crowd that night. And, you know, nice that he talked about me for a little bit and what I do from the comedy, comedy community scene. Um, then, um, the next person to come up was... Um, Andrea, Andrea, um, I think it was the first time I've seen her, Andrea Lugo, um, uh, she talked about dating apps, she talked about how she went on this bad date, and, um, apparently she wanted to share with us that the date that she had one time uh, I guess shit the bed twice. <laughs> so she said there was like brown streaks on her bed sheets or something, and like, oh man, that that is a funny story to tell. But uh, she talked about pretty much dating for for her set, and uh, she did pretty well with the crowd. Uh, I want to say that she was a uh, eight point eight point six out of ten. Um, next up, we have uh, the Marine of Comedy, uh, Kevin Davis. Um, he told me uh, before the show that he was doing some cruises for his comedy shows. And, um, well, in that case, uh, the crowd was in for a treat. And um, honestly, uh, Kevin did really well. He talked about his traits, you know, uh, not having good memory, repeated a couple of times. Uh, 
uh, he did talk about this one catchphrase because apparently it caught on. It was super funny. Um, it was the catchphrase, which I guess forever will be his. Um, pretty much suck a dick. Suck a dick. Um, I guess um, I think that was like the ultimate solution or something to everything. Something about when in doubt, suck a dick. If you're ever sick, suck a dick. Um, if you're ever curious or your guys want to get intimate, you know, suck a dick. If you want to get to know somebody, suck a dick or something. Something like that in that sense. So like he repeated it maybe like seven to eight times. And it just got more funny each time he said it after a um, uh, a scenario of what to do, and you just end it by saying "suck a dick." Um, oh, he had this other one where it's super funny about pretty people, beautiful people, and ugly people. And one in four people are ugly, and apparently, if you look around and you still can't figure out. Who is the ugly one? Congratulations, it's you. Uh, but, so everything was super funny. Everybody ate it up in the crowd. I want to say Kevin Davis was a nine out of ten. Uh, that was a that was a great great um, set he did. Um, might have been the best crowd reaction I've heard since I've seen him perform. So. And then I believe we have Walter Ford. Um, he pretty much talked about San Diego, try to be better drivers, uh, talk about Priuses, women who can't control their car because some homeless man just spits on their windshield and doesn't know what to do, think that it's a storm or something, and drive drive like it's a storm um he talked about uh his name from gary indiana that you know most likely you're going to get a job more likely with walter ford than with contavious <laughs> uh so um the those ones i can hear my friends and my co-workers laughing um, at that stuff and uh um he did really well um, I want to say Walter Ford was a eight point eight point uh, seven out of ten. Um, and then um, Gumbo uh, did have um, he had me do the uh, um, introduction of the uh, two, I guess you could say, contestants for the Nerve Challenge, which is me introducing the two people who were going to try their hand at stand-up comedy for the first time. I first introduced um, Ho Miss Holly. She's a dancer, and she had me read off something she texted me. And apparently, you know, um, She had me read the words, she brings big pussy energy to any room she's in. And um, I read that every word <laughs> that she texted me. And that got a big uh, ovation from the crowd. And then she did her thing, natural, comfortable up there. And um, I would say Holly had a few things to talk about. Um, I, I think she did talk about either dating and stuff and then some other stuff. Um, she might have talked about dancing. Um, uh, but, you know, I think she did all right. And I think the crowd um, liked her, um, especially for her first time trying comedy. And then I introduced the second one, 
The second one I kind of had to ad lib a little bit because Christy Drake didn't give me anything to read off as her intro, but I just kind of said something that I remembered from our conversation in the green room, which by the way is my first time being in the green room as an official performer in a sense in the capacity of an associate producer. So I remember she told me something about how she had danced at a gas station. So I just said that on stage that that was the only thing I could think of was that um, Christy likes to dance at gas stations. And that was what, how I introduced uh, Christy. And I just did everything in stride. So um, I introduced her and then, you know, she did pretty well on stage when she did, but she only talked about one topic. Um, I guess it was, I think it was something about um, shitting or pooping or something. <laughs> she talked about something nasty. So, uh, so, and I guess, um, I guess between the two, you know, I mean, they both did all right. But I think the better one who got the better reception was uh, Holly. So kudos to both ladies, though. And I found out later they were both dancers. Um, it, it was quite an experience being up there because, you know, I'm on stage, I'm on, on the microphone, spotlights in my face. And honestly, I got comfortable. Not, it didn't take me very long to get comfortable. Um, Honestly, uh, who knows? This could be a thing for me. Uh, so stay tuned, guys. Um, I guess... Uh, um, I guess... Yeah, between the two. I guess I should grade him. Uh, if I were to grade Holly, I think she was probably... A, 7.75 for her comedy and then for Christy I'll go with 7 out of 10 so great job ladies keep working on it make it your own own it um, after I introduced those two ladies um, to do their stand-up comedy then the time now goes to Gumbo's cousin Gail who was going to read some poetry to end the night and she read a long poem and it was pretty good and she got everybody kind of invested by the time throughout her poetry and um it was good stuff uh, i guess you could say the poetry part was a uh, eight out of ten so um Got to meet everyone, getting out of the room, um, my friends, family, coworkers. Um, it was kind of cool seeing all of them uh, there to support. Um, I guess this little journey I'm on, plus they get to see what I see. So this could be the first of many. So stay tuned, guys. Um, big thanks to Jeremy Gumbo Christian for letting me do this because it was kind of cool that you reached out to me and I was interested in doing this and um, you know um, at first I kind of thought that he wanted me to be part of the nerve challenge to kind of do three minutes of stand-up but I think I ended up just being like a host for it so um, it worked out either way you know um, so yeah Big thanks to everybody who came out. Big thanks to Gumbo, uh, Christian. Big thanks to Mike Shop for having this show, actually. So that's pretty cool. And we showed that it could be a sold out room. Well, guys, that's it for me. I am going to go, I guess, get some food. Um, work my other jobs, too. And uh, I will talk to you guys soon. Um, stay tuned for episode 197. I believe I'm going to make my predictions for UFC 306, UFC Noche, in the sphere in Las Vegas. All right, guys. Talk to you guys later. You know the saying goes. Boom. Tiggy Maximus signing off, baby. All right, later, guys. Booyah. Booyah. Booyah.